So we go, we, so I'm going to explain why this works the way it works. So now that we've work, walked through the scratch work, everything we've done up to this point is just fine. Okay, so that's the scratch work. Now, um, to do the formal proof, I start with x minus c less than delta. So absolute value x minus c. Now I was taking the limit as x went to 2 here and then less than delta, okay? Now, I'm choosing delta to be equal to epsilon divided by five here. So I'm gonna replace um, delta with um, epsilon divided by five, right? And what do I know, okay? Well, in my game plan, I was going from this point to this line right here. How did I do that? I multiplied both sides by absolute value x plus 2. So I multiply x plus 2, both sides here, x plus 2, both sides here, okay? Now, why did I do that? Because I know whenever I multiply this out, I get this piece here, which is my f of x minus my l, which is what's desired, right? So this gets me x squared minus my l, which is 4. But what's more important here is the fact that this right here simplifies. What do I know? Epsilon over 5 is less than... It's less than what? Epsilon over absolute value x plus 2. So I'm going to replace this epsilon over 5 with epsilon over absolute value x plus 2. Okay? So I literally just replace epsilon over 5, and then I said it was greater than, just like that there. That's why I choose that, the smaller of the two. Okay? I choose the smaller of the two. Right, I don't know why I forgot about that, but there it is, okay? So now what happens? Well, this absolute value x plus two cancels that absolute value x plus two, and so this just gets me equal to epsilon. Therefore, I have x squared minus four is less than epsilon as desired, okay? And so that was the game plan. And then, after you get this part of the formal proof, so I'm doing the formal in blue. Okay, so that's the formal proof there. Then I'm going to write it out. Therefore, given epsilon greater than zero, choose delta equal to epsilon divided by 5, then absolute value x minus 2 less than delta implies absolute value x squared, which is the function, minus the limit, 4, is less than epsilon. Thus, the limit as x approaches c, which is 2, of the function f of x, x squared, equals the limit four, okay? So that's the formal proof set up right there. So what's always gonna be written the same in your final conclusion? Therefore, given epsilon greater than zero, choose delta equal two. Then absolute value of x minus something is less than delta. Implies absolute value, absolute value less than delta. Thus, the limit as x goes to blah, blah, blah. So what's going to change from time to time? Depending on what you set uh, delta to be, epsilon over 5 in this particular case, that changes. Okay, the c value changes. So it's 2 here. We're limiting to 2. So I'll limit to 2. Uh, the function value is x squared here. So I have x squared. And... Um, then the limit four, and that's the limit four right there. So the things in the different color other than yellow, 
those are um, the things that are changing um, from problem to problem. Everything else is set up as the same sentence structure. So this is the structure that I'm looking for. If you see a question like this on your test, it says do the formal proof. I wanna see the scratch work, okay? We'll see, you know, where, where you started with, how you got to your, your choice of um, delta, because remember the scratch work, the whole point of the scratch work is to get this clever choice for delta, okay? So that's why we do it. Sometimes you gotta make restrictions on delta to get to it, but you gotta do what you gotta do, okay?